got that water. I got that water. Yeah, I got that water. Y'all, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Your girl G here. We are talking about growing up hip hop. I know this video is coming a little bit late. But those of you who have been following me know I had surgery on Thursday, so recovery was Friday, and now it's Saturday, and we're going to get back at it, okay? I was able to sit down and watch the episode, and basically, we basically watched this whole uh, exhibit of Romeo still showing his bitch assness. Basically, he is on the scale from 1 to 10 of bitch assness. He's 20, okay? It don't make no sense, and his daddy's 35. We're going to get into it, talk about the episode, and then, too, we're going to talk about uh, Easy e his little self sitting there being quiet. I didn't like how he was down there being mute, okay, because you had a lot to say in your professionals, and it definitely would have helped Bookie out while he's sitting there asking questions, and neither one of them wanted to answer, uh, give him a right answer about what was going on in the meeting. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about growing up hip-hop, and then I'll do the review for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after, okay? So nonetheless, let's start. So the episode opens up with Romeo walking in, and he has his whole little group with him, his little thugs. You know, I guess that's supposed to intimidate people um, into acting right or how they feel people should, you know, approach them and stuff like that. So he sits down and Master P notices that it's only Boogie, Brianna, and Easy there. So he asks Easy, oh, look, you know, we stuck you with the task, you know, to hit up everybody, you know, what's going on? First of all, Easy's uncomfortable that he's in the middle anyways, but he tells them, look, I contacted the Simmons and Angela feels like, look, Rome, if you got a problem, you got her number, you can hit her up personally. Romeo couldn't even really say anything in that instance. Um, and of course, JoJo's not going to come because it's his sister. And Vanessa, you put her in it, Romeo, and it had nothing to do with her. You were expressing all your grievances about Angela to Vanessa. That didn't make any sense. This all started because you hit a Vanessa first instead of Angela. Like, are you... I'm not understanding why you even did that in the first place. So something's starting to make me feel like there might have actually been some interaction between the two of them that was a little bit more intimate off screen than we know. Because ain't no way that this nigga's in his, feeling, this, his feelings this much if there was nothing non-emotional or attached about them both. Like, she must have hurt his feelings bad because he is hella salty right now. So, um... Now, Boogie's there, and he's like, okay, Romeo, you got this meeting. Like, what are we here for? What is it about? You know, what's the problem? Romeo got an attitude talking about, what is the problem, Boogie? What's the problem? Nigga, oh, I don't know. You called the meeting. What are we here for? You not telling nobody nothing. I, you expressing all this disdain for everybody. What is it? And Boogie, you got a little bass in his voice, so now Master P want to talk about, hey, but you know, don't act like that. You know, you ain't going to disrespect us. You know, we not your family, dog. Boogie's like, look, I'm keeping the stack. This is how I feel. You know what? I got a problem with you. I'll let you know. Nigga, you don't answer the phone. And Master P took that as a, I don't know, a, a, a sign of he was being, you know, a chick about it because he's like, oh, you know, he didn't answer the phone. Don't be a man about it, Boogie. Be a man. I'm confused. Like, because Boogie's telling your son, Romeo, that, look, I got a problem with you, but every time you don't answer the phone, like, I call you, you don't answer the phone, Rome, Mr. P wants to be like, oh, you know, you, you, you be, you're not being a man about it. Every time Boogie made a point against Romeo, Master P was over there on the sideline making his little points, trying to, like, flip it around everybody else. So Romeo was like, oh, you know, I didn't hit up everybody because, you know, I knew if it came for you, they'd be more receptive. If I tried to call, they wouldn't, uh, you know, hit me back. That's not true. Everybody had, doesn't necessarily have a problem with you, Romeo. They have a problem with the way you've been acting. And now you're, this whole issue started all from you. And you're saying, oh, everybody got involved. It's a bunch of he said, she said. But the he said, she said started because you went to Vanessa. And then Vanessa had to go to Angela. And then Angela had to come to your freaking party because every time she tried to call you off screen you didn't want to answer the phone so now boogie's sitting there asking romeo like okay you know i understand you got an issue with everybody you know and then he brought up bow wow somehow because he's like i'm not gonna do the fake stuff you know everybody's been trying to pin me against bow wow for the longest i've been knowing him you know in the game forever and people don't know we really you know this cool so book is like okay did you call bow wow man book what's the issue with you you know you trying to come in with this i'm not being disrespectful he's like i'm not but you still ain't answer my question did you call Bow Wow? Yeah, we talk, you know, we got stuff going on, you know, we got business, you know, that's, it is what it is. And every time Boogie was like trying to ask him about, okay, these people you got a problem with, have you called them yet? Like Romeo didn't have no rebuttal to that. So now I think Romeo in this time, this conversation, we're realizing how stupid he was sounding. And every time he got caught up, Master P was butting in, trying to save the day. Look, 
pop your titty out of his mouth. Rogan needs to learn how to be a man. Even though he don't look like it, he's still 12 years He look like he's 12. He actually 30 some years old and he needs to start acting like it. Him and these goddamn kids that he had on. What kind of shoes was those? You, Romeo came with some kids and Mr. Percy Percival Master P. Miller came in with some goddamn diabetic sneakers. I don't know what the heck them two fools had on. But now Romeo's sitting there talking to Bug because he's like, oh, you don't answer the phone. Oh, why don't your daddy answer the phone? Your daddy don't answer the phone uh, when, you, when, your, when your sister's call. And it's like, whoa. Like, first of all, that had nothing to do with this issue that we got now. And secondly, you're starting to take low blows because you realize you back into a corner and you, and you making no sense. So Boogie starts kind of poking at him. Oh, you mad? Like, why your lip trembling? I'm just trying to ask questions. Like, why you taking it like that? And so Master P's like, oh, you playing games right now? He's like, I'm not playing no games. I'm keeping it a stack. Like, I, you say you got these issues and stuff. Why haven't you called Angela? You could have did this off camera, handled everything off camera, called people personally. Then bro, Master P going to talk about, yeah, we, we did that. Oh, word, you did that? You call people off camera and then they run the tape. We TV was hella messy this episode because they ran the tape back for everything Romeo was trying to say he did and they contradicted every little bit of it because he want to say, oh, you know, you ain't never heard of me in no drama. Y'all ain't never heard me in the tablets, you know, talking about women, disrespecting women. Uh-oh, run the tape, run the clip. We see him talking about Angela to Vanessa. Oh my God, you know, you want to post pictures, you know, go out there with the ballers. You ain't got to degrade yourself like that. You Angela Simmons. You said that verbatim at your mouth. And Romeo, you want to sit here and say, feel like, oh, producers and, you know, the TV channel or whatever it is, is trying to work against you and make you look a certain way. They can only make you look a certain way based on what you give them. This is all based on what you give them. You say, okay, they're trying to make a beef between you and Bow Wow. They can only make a beef between you and Bow Wow if you had some beef uh, like or some negative things to say against him. And necessarily this season at all, there has literally has been no talk about Romeo versus Bow Wow because for one, it's all been about Bow Wow and Angela. And then two, the real beef is between Egypt, Sam versus everybody. So it has not been a beef between you and Bow Wow. And then, oh, they're just using Angela as a pawn. And then Boogie had to check and be like, bruh, the whole, there was a whole love interest between you and Angela the first five seasons. And they, what? Like I said, run the clip. And here it is. You and Angela doing all this stuff. Y'all being, you know, real flirtatious with each other. You even admitting, yeah, Angela, I like your ass. Is that what you want me to hear you say? So it wasn't like, quit acting like you innocent in this. You and Angela very much were using each other. Y'all understood. We got to do this for the TV show. And you're an executive producer at that. So you do have some say in what gets clipped and what stays in the show of some aspects. So you're, look, Romeo, you not out, out here you know, stuck in the middle of the ocean, floating by yourself with no one to save you. You keep trying to say, oh, I don't have no problem with nobody. If you don't have no problem with nobody, what the hell are we here for? What is this meeting for? Just answer the goddamn phone. Oh, and then when you start, you know, getting stuck, now here it is. Oh, you know, Boogie, we ain't friends in real life. You don't know me. I don't know. No, I don't talk to nobody. Y'all just castmates. Yeah, that's just what it is. You know, and then like Master P want to say, oh, Boogie was acting like a, like a, um, he wasn't acting like a man, you know, you ain't gonna just you're gonna talk to your daddy like that. Then Book was like, uh, well, if you ain't called Angela, here go Master P button in again, talking about, oh, you know, why you even worried about, it? you know, if they did that on their own time, you know, they ain't got no concern with you. Y'all trying to make it he say, she say, you know, if he he ain't slept with that girl, he ain't did nothing with that girl that you know, that you know, Master P, because the way your son acting right now is real bitch made, like he in his feelings. Angela might have thrown that stuff on, you know, sat on it real quick. And, you know, now Romeo's feeling a certain type of way because he can, for the life of me, we still can't figure out why he would not call Angela back or sit down and have a conversation with her. Why? Master P, you sitting here backing up a whole situation for one that you got nothing to do with. And then two, your son is absolutely wrong. He's wrong. He's dead ass wrong. And then easy sitting over there being quiet and in the confessional, you're literally agreeing with every point that Boogie made, but you couldn't do that in front of Romeo and Master P. Had Easy been, you know, in there mediating and saying the same and backing Boogie up, Romeo, I think, would have been more receptive and actually realized where he went wrong. So then it's like, oh, you know, I'm about my business. You know, I got business, so I got I got stuff to lose. You know, that's not you. 
And Book is like, wait a minute, you're not going to degrade me, homeboy. Like, that's not what we about to do. Don't sit here and try to make it seem like you bigger and better than me. See, the problem is Mr. Miller done blew up your head, Romeo. And now y'all feeling like y'all all this. And because people aren't, you know, res being receptive to y'all to think y'all the that the way that y'all think they should because y'all feel like y'all royalty or something like that then y'all got an attitude people aren't just supposed to hop skip and jump because y'all say here here you know come to this meeting when y'all could have called them personally and avoided all of this shit and really caught them off camera so then um he starts talking about how oh i'm trying to grow i'm going off to do my own thing you know i got x on the beach i'm filming something every month chill bruh x on the beach you a host I, bruh X on the Beach is literally the lowest class of the MTV TV shows that there is. So pump your brakes, homeboy. Um, and you're like, you know, if you don't want to be along with me when I grow, then I can't hang out with you. That's not the problem. Nobody's not telling you, Romeo, to go on and do big things and, you know, flourish and have your businesses and stuff like that. But along the way, don't be an asshole to people and they be confused when they don't fuck with you. Like... Two plus two is not equal to four here because still at the end of the day, you ain't answer Boogie's answer with uh, his question, which is what is the problem? What is the motherfucking problem? Then you got Master P over here. Like I said, his goddamn uh, class reunion suit on with his diabetic shoes trying to tell Boogie, oh, you know, listen, okay, I'll be quiet, Boogie. You know, I'll let you talk so you can shut up after you get done talking. And in the minute, minute Boogie tries to start saying something, oh, but you ain't even do it. And then Boogie was kind of like, he's like, okay, I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna let you talk. And it's like, oh, you know, if you want to clap, be like, oh, you know, run up for Gangsta Award is Boogie. Like, Master P, go kick rocks and over toe shoes. Like, you make me so sick. And that's why everybody else didn't show up too because they knew it wasn't going to be Romeo. It was going to be Master P buttoning in or some shit he had nothing to do with. Nobody wants to talk to Romeo and, and the daddy. Like Boogie said, we got a problem with you, Romeo, with you. And then his friends is back there. And finally, Romeo basically gave up because he realized he was making no absolutely no sense when boogie kept calling him out he's like you know what i'm not gonna do this because this meeting ain't going the way that i thought it should you know it, it ain't going the way i planned so i'm gonna head out here i'm letting everybody know that i'm quitting the show i'm not gonna do this because i'm not gonna be a part of the fake stuff and they kept running stuff back oh i'm not gonna be part of the fake stuff then you see their breakfast club interviews where angela and stuff was like this ain't fake anything that you see on the show is, is what really happened then it's like oh I, you know, I've been trying to be grown about it. And then you see Angela, I tried to call Romeo. He ain't answered the phone to this day. Like it was so contradictory and there's proof against you, Romeo. Everything that you've tried to say that you did, it's proof that it's the complete opposite. So I'm wondering what's going to happen when y'all run this shit back and watch it. Are you going to feel stupid and apologize to everybody? Brianna over there talking about, I'm not in the same, my problem. First of all, Brianna, he's using you because he knows that you're an outcast compared to everybody. Everybody in the beginning didn't like you, Brianna. And so now that he's kind of on his way out, he's trying to basically make a friend of you because you're low-key on the outskirts of everybody. You're just not getting cool with Angela and the Simmonses and everybody like that because you're on this new spiritual journey and stuff like that. So he was only being cool with you because he on the outs now too. Um, So because things ain't going his way, he want to act like a little, little baby. If you don't get your pamper off and quit acting like a child, he run up out of there. And Boog is not having it. He's like, I'm tired of people, you know, trying to play me. There is no issue. You still ain't told me. Then Master P want to bring up the whole ICDC thing. Oh, you know, y'all trying to come after him. You, we trying to, what, what's so funny about that? Brianna had to be like, look, Twist Delivery is on point. That shit was funny. I'm sorry. You can't laugh at yourself. Then it was even more stupid when he talking about, oh, when Boog was like, you know, like, oh, cause he's asked, oh, oh, we, what do we even do after this in real life, Boog? We don't hang out. Oh, we don't hang out because one, you don't answer the phone. And two, you're choosing not to hang out. You segregate yourself. People who do these shows, just because they film, like y'all can't become real friends. It's up to you be to become real friends outside of the filming. Y'all can still hit each other up, but you weren't doing that, Romeo. You weren't be trying to be friends with everybody. You viewed this as a business and as, you know, we're just cast wings. But everybody else has actually made genuine friendships outside of the show. Look at Brianna and Twist. Look at TT and Vanessa. They've actually... Forge friendships outside of filming grown up hip hop. You chose not to do that and you're mad about it. He, oh, you know, they took, it took seven, it took seven years for them to penetrate this. Boogie was like, pause, nigga, I ain't penetrating nothing for seven years. And that's the, and that's my point exactly because here it is, these people were lagging behind you for seven years. And so that's what you want everybody else to do because y'all had y'all little homeboys from the hood 
vying so hard to get out that they was running behind you and your daddy's ass for seven years just to get a little piece of the pie and to make it out. And so you feel like because y'all got homeboys around y'all doing that, everybody else is supposed to do that too. Newsflash, everybody else in Grown Up Hip Hop got royalty in their blood. So now he ended up leaving. Boogie's like, man, F this. And then his homeboy, Lil Walker Rome, whatever, trying to get into it. Oh, you know, why you get hostile? It's going to be a problem. We could put the gloves on. Boog is like, first of all, like, it ain't no issue. I didn't even know there's a problem about the joke in the first place. And he told me I made jokes. He can't even tell me what the jokes is. First of all, little, um, walk around, whatever it is. <laughs> what, who are you? Okay. And it easily, you sat there real quiet and you agreed with everything Boog was saying. You felt like Roman should have called everybody independently. You felt like Master P shouldn't have been in there nowhere, but you didn't say that at all. So Bow Wow pulls up late after Boog runs Romeo off. He gets fielded on the fact that, you know, he's feeling some type of way. And he's like, look, Romeo, me, you know, me and him talk independently outside of this. You know, it's business. It's no problem. So after the meeting, um, we see the part where TT's having dinner with her little dude. You know, she's pregnant. She gets up, go to the bathroom. Vanessa basically gets out of him that um, he's going to be proposing in a couple of days. So that's going to be nice to see that. Um, we see TT and Tyran talking about Egypt and this situation with her punching Brianna. And it's like, oh my God, like she would not be in a situation had Sam not been in there. So Egypt coming to talk to them and uh, they message Tretch because they know Peppa is a lost hope. That's Boo Boo the Fool. She dumb as a box of rocks. She's on the Sam train too. Bitch is ditzy, okay? I don't know how she not, like Tyran said, how is nobody seeing the common thread in this situation? So they message Tretch and in the middle of them talking to her, Egypt comes in and basically she's still on the stance of, oh, you know, I need to show everybody I'm about that life. Like I'm a grown woman. Can't people, you know, manip she wants to say that Brianna manipulated her and bullied her. Girl, you came in there on 10. You ain't going to come in with an attitude. Expect me not to get an attitude with you. You're the one that hyped all that up. Um, And so you want this thing to be treated like a big girl so bad. That I want to be a woman. I want people to treat me like an adult. When you got to act like an adult, punching somebody in the face does not show how grown you are. Egypt and that just goes to show that you have no idea what growth is supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like you in your head you feel like oh I'm really proving people you know I'm I'm grown and I'm not no kid no more because I punched Brianna in the face like no that's not how that worked so Tretch messes her in the middle of them talking and she knows that it most likely was TT and Tyran so she's like she gets all flustered and ends up leaving so um Angela ends up talking to Vanessa because she's telling her how Bree called her and told her what happened. And Angela at this point is like, okay, he's leaving. Okay, and he still ain't called nobody. He's an executive producer. Like, you join this. Can't nobody. Everything that happened on the show is something that was recorded that was real life. Like, you're getting mad at situations that you created for one. And you are you knew what you were signing up for. Like, this is reality TV. You knew exactly what you were signing up for. There has to be some type of storyline, which is why you played into it for five years with Angela. Uh, I can't. So Angela's like, you still ain't picked up the phone. And I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to follow after you, constantly call you, text you, you not answer. All of a sudden you want to pop up at the, at the woodwork and tell me to come run into a meeting. No, nigga, that's not how that's going to work. So at this point, Vanessa's like, I just don't want to be in the middle of it any anymore. And she understands that Angela's probably a lot more hurt than she's leading on because they did have a genuine friendship. They did like each other. So this is just going all downhill. And Angela's looking like, I don't care no more. So we end up getting to the end of the episode. And Tretch is sitting there with her. Hush. Hey, Chico. Hush. Sorry. See what I got to do with it. Chico. Hush. Hey. Hush. All right, y'all, let me wrap this up. So basically, at the end, we see Tretch talking to Tyran. And Tyran basically telling him how everybody knows Sam was hyping Egypt up to fight Brianna. And Tretch has an issue because he's like, that's not what a real man does. A real man protects his woman, doesn't want her to fight. Unfortunately, Tretch, Egypt is not what a real man, Okay. It's just not happening. That's not how it's going to go. Sam is still a child at some point, so he cannot protect Egypt. And he heard how Sam was basically being a cheerleader out there. And so I'm wondering how Tretch is going to feel when he watched that shit back and watched Sam running around the kitchen talking about, oh, Tyson and all type of stuff. He's going to get in Egypt's ass for one. And he's going to start looking at Sam a little bit more side-eyed because 
He's supposed to be passing his daughter off to you, Sam. You're supposed to cherish her. And you're supposed to know that this is Tretch and Peppa's daughter. So she has a reputation to uphold. And you're not letting her do that. So they end up ending the episode right there. And next week, we're going to see, I guess, JoJo and Twist get into it. So we'll be back for that. And we're going to talk about it. All right. So drop down in the comments. Tell me what you thought about Romeo's meeting. And I will see you guys next time. Make sure before you go to like, subscribe to my channel. And I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.